वर्बल सेक्शन में सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट होते हैं आरसीज एंड इस वीडियो में मैं कवर करने वाला हूं द कंप्लीट थ्योरी ऑन रीडिंग कॉम्पिएशन आई विल टेल यू ऑल द स्ट्रेटजीज दैट विल हेल्प यू एलिमिनेट द रॉन्ग ऑप्शन एंड ये एक अकेडमिक वीडियो होने वाली है सो मेक श्योर यू हैव योर पेन एंड पेपर रेडी इफ यू डो नॉट नोट डाउन दीज स्ट्रेटजीज एंड प्रैक्टिस आर सी प्रॉब्लम यूजिंग दीज स्ट्रेटजीज देन इट्स अ कंप्लीट वेस्ट ऑफ योर टाइम सो ग्रैब अ पेन एंड पेपर सिट स्ट्रेट एंड लेट्स एंड बिफोर आई मूव टू द स्ट्रेटजीज यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दैट कैन बी आस इन अ पर्टिकुलर रीडिंग कॉम्पिएशन so they can be divided broadly into three types first are the general questions so these are questions basically like what is the main idea of the passage what is the summary of this particular passage what is the tone of the author so basically you need to interpret these things from the passage and answer accordingly next are the specific questions so these are questions like what does the author mean from this particular word in the passage or what does this particular line mean in the context of the paragraph or in the context of the passage so these are very specific questions on a particular word or on a particular line and for specific questions you might need to return to the passage check out the exact word or the line that is being referred to and then answer accordingly remember for general questions if your comprehension ability is good most of the time you would not need to come back to the passage and if you are coming back to the passage for general question then certainly you need to increase your comprehension ability for obviously the specific questions you have to come back and the third category of question is what i call the interpretation questions and these are definitely the most difficult ones so these are questions like which of the following will strengthen in the argument of the author or which of the following will weaken the argument of the author here what you need to do is first understand the main idea of the passage or the main idea of the paragraph and after that check the options and interpret which of the following will strengthen that main idea or weaken that main idea so this is basically one level above the general questions here you need to understand the main idea first and after that interpret which of the following will strengthen or weaken that main idea so if your main idea itself is incorrect then obviously it will be very difficult to answer these questions but what i have seen mostly in interpretation question the paper setters mostly set the options very easy so it becomes very easy to interpret which is going to be the right answer and for interpretation questions as well you need not come back to the passage and now that you have understanding of all three different types of question that can be asked in an rc let's move to the eight strategies that you should keep in mind while eliminating the options the first strategy is to avoid extreme words and these are words like all each every always so these are basically words the option in itself might be correct but by using these extreme words that option can be made incorrect as well let's understand this with an example which will make it clear for you suppose the question is which of the following can be correctly inferred from the results of the survey and first option was many respondents of the survey were open to the idea of participation in most of the qgp initiatives and the second option was the respondents greatly appreciated all the qgp initiatives and proposed participation in it so i'll give you the context of the passage in this particular question the context of the passage was if majority of the qgp initiatives are accepted then the proposal will be passed and the proposal was passed in this particular passage so we definitely know that they agreed for most of the qgp initiative however the second option mentions all the qgp initiatives were accepted which might not be true as well and that's why using this extreme word all makes this option incorrect the next strategy is to use the tone approach and here you need to match the tone of the options with the tone of the rest of the paragraph or rest of the passage. Passage. So basically, these are very specific questions. For example, which of the following sentences will complete this particular paragraph, or which of the following sentences will complete the passage? These kind of questions. Here, you need to be careful that the option, the tone in which the option is written, that should match the tone of the rest of the paragraph. And obviously, these are very difficult questions because the two options here would be very close. It will be very difficult to select the right answer and to eliminate the wrong option. So let's take an example and see this particular thing. So one of the Karsi question was which of the following sentence best completes the first paragraph of the passage the first option was for a long time women have been part of less privileged sections of the society and second option is for a long time women were kept out of mainstream policies rendering them as less privileged so you can see in both the option they are speaking about the same thing both are factually correct as well however in this case the rest of the tone of the paragraph was accusational and that's why the second one which is kind of an accusational tone is the correct option the first one if you see is more of an informational tone it's factually correct both of the sentences both of the options are speaking the same thing as well but the first one is factual or informational tone and the second one is accusational tone because rest of the paragraph was also accusational in tone that's why the second one becomes the right answer only that option can complete the passage or this particular paragraph 
correctly. The third strategy is to avoid incorrect cause effect relationship or to avoid incorrect linkages. And this trap also makes the options very tricky. What happens in this kind of an option? Suppose something is mentioned A and B, two things are mentioned in that particular option. A is factually correct. B will be factually correct. However, in the option, these two things will be linked. Suppose A has caused B or B has happened because of A or something of this kind of a connection will be made. A is factually correct. B is factually correct. But that linkage that has happened between A and B that makes this particular option wrong. Now let's use an example and I will use two examples over here because you need to understand this correctly. This one is really tricky. So I will use one option of a particular RC question and I will explain why it was incorrect in the context of this particular passage. So the option was the passage states adoption of flexible work schedules caused an increase in overall company productivity. So now I'll explain what the passage had mentioned. The passage had mentioned that obviously a flexible work schedule policy was implemented that increased employee satisfaction. And for that, a survey was done that had definitely increased employee satisfaction. And during that period, the employee productivity had also went up. However, there is no fact backing up that it happened because of flexible work schedule. So both the facts are correct. Flexible work schedule policy was implemented during that time. The employee productivity had definitely went up. However, there is no data to prove that there was a cause and effect relationship that productivity could have gone up due to many other reasons during that period as well. And that's why while both the options are correct, while both the facts mentioned in this particular option is correct. However, we cannot link these two particular facts. Let's take another question. Which of the following is true? The most optimistic cultures around the world speak languages which have more positive than negative words. And the second option is vocabulary tends to affect the culture of society with more positive words implying a more optimistic culture. Here you can see clearly the next one, whatever is mentioned in both the options is correct, kind of correct as well. That yes, it was seen that more the positive words, more is the optimistic culture, more the optimistic culture, more is the positive words used in that particular culture. However, there is there can be a correlation, but there was no cause and effect relationship. The second option, which clearly states that vocabulary tends to do this, this is definitely correct because nowhere it was mentioned that vocabulary will make a culture more optimistic or will use more positive words or anything of that sort. That's why there is an incorrect in cause and effect relationship in the second option. It's an incorrect linkage. The second option was incorrect. And before I move to the next strategy, let me remind you if you're finding the information useful, this is my YouTube studio analytics. As you can see, most of my regular viewers have not yet subscribed to the channel. So if you are a CAD aspirant or an MBA aspirant finding the information useful, I will definitely urge you to consider subscribing to the channel. It's obviously free for you, but definitely helps me a lot and will also help you stay updated. So thank you for considering it and let's move ahead. The fourth strategy is to infer as little as possible. And what I mean with this is you need to restrict your knowledge to whatever is mentioned in the passage. There might be the passage might be on a topic where you know a lot of external things, but you cannot assume those facts. Your knowledge is whatever your knowledge while solving the question is whatever is mentioned in the passage. I'll give you a very simple example for this. Suppose you know a lot about cricket and there's a passage on cricket and you know, say white ball gives an one additional run. However, if it is not mentioned in the passage, you cannot assume that the white ball will give one additional run. If it is mentioned in any of the options, you need to eliminate that because it's an alien concept. It's a external concept that's not mentioned in the passage. So you cannot assume that. And while eliminating these options is quite easy. However, what happens is sometimes a paper setter includes such an obvious fact that you tend that students tend to overlook that it was never mentioned in the passage. Usually the paper setter will use this trick with very obvious facts with very factual things that students will not even go back to the passage and think that, oh, this was never mentioned over there and tend to overlook such a simple thing. And it might be just one line in an option. That's why you need to be careful about this particular thing because the paper setter might try to trick you through very obvious facts. The next strategy is to avoid broad and narrow concepts. Here, what the author or the paper setter will basically try to do is sometimes try to broaden the scope of the option or narrow down the scope of the option. And both of those will be incorrect. Here I can say like, let's use an example. There was a passage on higher education and there was a question which of the best which of the following options best describes the passage and there were two options over here. So the two options were the passage discusses the role of education in shaping the society and improving the standard of living. And the second option was the passage argues that increasing enrollment in STEM programs will improve global technology sectors. And here 
both the options were incorrect because as i told the passage talks about higher education and the first option talks about education in general that's why the use of word higher would have made this option correct however because it's mentioned education it can mean anything k12 higher education everything is included so it's a broad concept it's a broad option that's why it was incorrect and the second one you can see it specifically talks about stem while it is in while obviously it is correct option while factually it is correct and along with stem a lot of other fields were also mentioned however since we are talking about higher education and not only stem field that's why this option was incorrect because it's a narrow concept along with stem there might be other fields as well and that's why this option also became incorrect and that is what we mean by broad and narrow concept the next strategy is what i call the majority approach and usually this kind of an approach is used for what is the main idea of the passage these kind of questions what happens is all the options will be correct however there would be one option which will cover more ideas presented in the passage compared to the rest of the options the rest of the options options will be correct but will possibly cover the idea of just one particular paragraph or just two or three particular paragraphs however there will be an option which will cover more ideas additional ideas compared to the other options so the uh, option that covers more ideas majority of the ideas that will be the correct option so let's share an example with you to make this clear the central argument of the passage is military and civil society share a symbiotic relationship yes it was mentioned in the passage they do share a symbiotic relationship the second one was military establishments are shaped by the culture of the society they serve yes it was mentioned in one of the paragraphs that yes they are shaped by the society that they serve the third one societal attitudes and military policies influence and rely on each other for a vibrant society and here you can see this is basically saying that both military and civil societies rely on each other basically share a symbiotic relationship what was covered in the first paragraph and also that they rely on each other the second option you can see it was mentioned that military establishments are affected by society however the opposite was true as well which was not covered in the second paragraph so you can see over here the third one which covers majority of the ideas that the yes they do share a symbiotic relationship that yes both of them yes are dependent or shared by each other so that is the correct option because it covers majority of the points the first two options were also factually correct were mentioned in specific paragraphs however because here we are talking about the central argument in the passage we will choose the third option because it covers majority of the points mentioned in the passage the next strategy is what i call irrelevant so here the option that is being mentioned the paper setter will completely put that option as factually correct option however that will be completely irrelevant to the question that is being asked here the question would be something like why does the author say this particular thing or what does the author mean in this particular paragraph and here when you see the options one of them will definitely be factually correct however it will be totally irrelevant to what is the question being asked and here i don't think i need to share any example with you especially because usually these kind of questions are very easy students are smart enough to figure out that the option is totally irrelevant similar to anything which is false as well anything which is factually incorrect in the option students are smart enough to understand it from the passage and eliminate those options and usually i would feel that irrelevant and false options are the easiest to eliminate and the last strategy is for the most difficult questions what i call compare and justify and you will only use this strategy when all the other options are failed because this will take you a lot of time as well so what i do in compare and justify it will happen often that you will be confused between two options so confused that everything in in those two options looks absolutely correct what you need to do here is read both the options simultaneously compare each and every word of both the options and also try to justify each and every word of both the options given in the passage through the passage basically you need to justify each and every word of the options most likely you will find some hint that one of the options can be eliminated either through comparison or through justification using the passage you will find a hint that you can eliminate one of the option but definitely this is for the most difficult questions once you reach a stage i hope in none of the questions you have to use this last strategy where you are simultaneously reading both the options comparing and justifying each and every word of both the options but it can happen usually you should take the strategy only when you have a lot of time to attempt your verbal paper mostly these kind of questions you can either skip it come back to these questions later 
compare, justify, take your time, mark the right option. Hope you would have noted down these strategies and remember just noting down these strategies or just watching this video is not going to help you. Now you need to go back and practice RCs. You need to practice hundreds of RCs, eliminate options using these strategies only then you will be able to perfect the art. Otherwise these questions, these patterns do not mean anything. So make sure you practice these. All the best for your CAD exam. See you in the next video.